Hi, this is Kenneth, uh, and I will be going through my project for the Amazon Web Services Data Exchange Challenge. So we'll get started. Uh, so basically, I analyzed uh, data that was provided by Google Inc. It was mobility data for uh, all the countries in the world, or I'm assuming most of the countries. Uh, and just to keep in mind, this can be implemented for any country, uh, at any level, so state level, province level, whatever you need. Uh, I just analyzed the United Arab Emirates because when I first opened up the file, that was the first country I saw. So might as well do it. Um, so first of all, we load the data set. This is all very basic stuff. You see pandas, you read the CSV. Uh, you continue down. I use what is called FB Profit to identify change points in mobility data. Now the purpose of this is to actually determine if policies that were implemented, uh, if they had any effect on mobility data. Uh, in a country. So mobility of data basically describes the activity uh, and the information from activity that's feeded from smartphones, uh, computer-based techno uh, computer technologies and vehicles, and stuff like that. Um, there are ethical issues to uh, mobility data and gathering mobility data from personal cell phones, but we won't get into that. We'll just get into the techno te technological side of everything. So basically, I use FB Profit. Now, this is a very popular change point identification system, uh, or API, that's used in R and Python. Of course, I implemented it in Python because it's it's most flexible that way. Uh, but you can, of course, you can do it in uh, in R. Now, basically, I loaded all the data sets I needed to. I I, uh, I adjusted it so that it specifically identifies and uses these columns of data. So as you can see here, it's these three. So date. Uh, retail and recreation percent change from baseline and grocery pharmacy percent change from baseline. So this is just all the mobility data from each industry uh, and I analyzed all uh, these these two because these seem to have the most effect um, take the most effect from COVID-19. Um, so this is basically it. Uh, you import all the modules you need to import uh, and specifically select the columns you're going to use to train the model, the time series model. These are the change points identified, uh, profit basic change points, so the basic change points that were identified from this process. This process. Now, this is where we get into identifying the change points, and it forecasts it a bit, but I tried to prevent it from forecasting because we don't have enough data from the United Arab Emirates uh, to forecast more, so we're just going to take a look at what they've provided us with. Uh, now, basically, it identifies different components um, the components that were introduced in my GitHub uh, repository, README. Uh, if you haven't read that yet, I'd recommend you read it. It has a full-on explanation as to how it identifies the components, defines the functions, and everything in order for it to plot a time series and identify change points. Um, as you can see here, there throughout the whole data set, we can notice that Friday is usually the day where uh, mobility data or activity goes down and it starts to increase again. Um, we're not sure if that's just because of people's cycles or because I know that a lot of people on Fridays relax, uh, but, you know, we're not sure if it's because of that, but uh, most likely it's because of uh, lowered activity uh, in the population. Um, and here we can actually see it identify the change points. Now, we want to go off of, well, I want to go off of monthly seasonality uh, for this grocery and pharmacy percent change. Even for most mobility data in COVID-19, you want to go by monthly seasonality, as that's the... It's not too big of a period, but not too small. Uh, I think weekly and daily, I was considering weekly. Daily is just way too precise. Uh, weekly is kind of in the middle, so monthly makes more sense to me. Um, but we wanted to get a general overview, but also a, a specific enough overview of the mobility data provided to us. And since most of it were, uh, most of the data that was provided was in monthly intervals, uh, it would be ideal to use it, uh, use a monthly seasonality. Now, I did the same over here for the retail and recreation uh, industries. Uh, it does the same thing. It does the same change point identification. If you read my uh, GitHub, again, uh, you can uh, fully understand how I did it over there. Um, I'm, I'll go and talk about how I went about doing the regression prediction using a multi-layer perceptron-based artificial neural network. Now, this was a bit uh, more complicated as there were some issues with importing the data, making sure that the input shape was correct, uh, adjusting which activation functions I want to use, which initializers, 
uh, and stuff like that. Um, so here again, I just load the data set, UAE mobility data, it's just the country, you just filter the data uh, for rows that have this, uh, you know, that's how you get UAE uh, data specifically. Uh, I import necessary models, uh, modules, uh, so Keras, you import this sequential model, the dense layer, um, just the necessary things to make a proper model. Now, since when you're training the model, the X train needs to be a two dimensional array. And since this was imported as a one dimensional array, there's no, you can't just add two brackets or so it just gives you an error. This is something like uh, dimensionality error or something like that. Uh, in order to do that, I had to reshape it uh, using this method, very simple stuff. And since it was, it was a date, uh, you know, TensorFlow and Akeros cannot recognize dates, nor can Python alone. So you have to put it to numeric uh, and then uh, reshape the data so it becomes two dimensional, or at least so that Keras can actually recognize it. Split the data, the test size is 30%, uh, 0.3, and you just scale it, very basic stuff. And then here's where I built the model. So I didn't try to make it too complicated. I wanted to make sure that I, would, I knew what I was doing. I knew that I was building a model that uh, would be able to provide me with confident uh, regression analysis and predictions. So I built a very simple model just using dense layers, 64 layer, uh, 64 filters, my bad, uh, a kernel initializer, a normal kernel initializer, of course, an activation, uh, ReLU activation function, and the input shape is 1, 4, 1480 by 1. So that's just the shape of the data, the UAE mobility data, which makes sense. It has to be the same. Uh, and then the next layer, just 64 layers of a, 64 filters, the dense layer, again, an activation function, the ReLU activation function and then just ending it off with one dense layer filter. Uh, compiled it using a loss function, MSE loss functions, makes sense, very standard. Optimizer, optimizer is the RMS prop. I wanted to use the Ada Max or Ada Plus, but uh, sorry, the Ada Max, my bad, um, but you know, it didn't really provide me with the results I wanted, so. I uh, might as well use RMS prop because I have more experience with using it. We can see what the model looks like uh, through this model summary. Uh, we can get the weights just to take a look at the weights. Um, you can get a clearer view and a slower view of it on my uh, GitHub repository uh, if you click on my dev post submission. So here we fitted the model. There's not much difference here, standard fitting. Uh, and it was able to compute it with 500 epochs. Um, just it gradually increases over time, which is pretty good. The accuracy increases. You can assess the test accuracy and the test loss, not bad. And then we can predict um, the X test, uh, and it just flattens the prediction so that they're more clear. Um, so there we go, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed my project, and have a good day.